In our next interesting invention that we came up with in order to take advantage of this enthalpy of solution is what we call the hot pack. And for those who go skiing and your fingers and your toes get cold out there on the slopes, they sell those little packages. You crush them, something happens inside, and all of a sudden they begin to get warm. And typically what it is is there's some, some solid in there that when it gets mixed in with water, in the pack we break the seal, water rushes in, starts dissolving the solid in there, and all of a sudden the pack begins to give off heat. So what happens there is that we have a material in there, in this case we have calcium chloride, we dissolve it in water, we separate the calcium ions from the chlorine ions, and all of a sudden we have some heat dissipation. And the reason of that is because the enthalpy of solution there is negative. That means it's exothermic. That means the reaction actually releases heat. That heat then gets absorbed by the water. The water gets warm and then of course the water then radiates out the heat to the pack and slowly gives you that, that warmth, keeping your fingers and your toes warm. All right, so let's figure out uh, how we can uh, figure out how hot this pack will get. And usually it comes with a warning. It says on there, don't have that contacting the bare skin because it could actually burn you. Well, let's see if that makes any sense or not. Again, let's say that the pack starts out at room temperature, maybe 25 degrees centigrade. So we say T initial is equal to 25 degrees centigrade. Those packs tend to be smaller in size than the cold packs. So maybe there's only a, a few ounces of water in there, like 50 grams of water, and maybe a quarter mole of the calcium chloride. Now, what is the molar mass of calcium chloride? Well, the um, molar mass of calcium, calcium has a mass of, I believe, 40.08 grams per mole. And then for chlorine, so chlorine, uh, I think it's, uh, well, we have two chlorines, so it's two times 35.45 grams per mole, if I'm not mistaken. And so when we add all that together, that would be uh, 70.9 and 40, that would be 110.7 uh, no, 0.98. Skip a few steps here in the arithmetic, but uh, let's see. That's, nope, 110. About 110.98 grams per mole. All right, now, we got one quarter mole of that. So first what we're going to do is figure out the heat released by this much being dissolved in water. Of course, that comes from the equation right here. The enthalpy of solution says that if you have one mole of this calcium chloride dissolving in water, it will release 82,800 joules of energy. And that energy, of course, will go into the water, heating up the water. So the question is, how much, how hot will that water get? Well, let's find out. Um, see here, we have the delta Q is equal to mc delta T. So in other words, the change in the temperature is going to be equal to the heat released by the reaction divided by the mass of the water and the specific heat of water. And so the delta Q here is going to be one quarter because we only have one quarter of a mole of this calcium chloride. Turns out I probably didn't even need to know the molar mass of chloride because we were just told it was a one quarter of a mole. So one quarter of the heat released, which is 82,800 joules. And we divide that by the mass of the water, in this case 50 grams. And the specific heat of water would be 4.186 calories per gram per centigrade degree. So that's why we can leave this quantity in grams because we have the specific heat in terms of grams as well. So let's find out. So 82,800 divided by 4, which is 20,700 joules of energy being released, divided by 50, and divided by 4.186, and wow, 98.8. 9 degrees equals 98.9 degree or centigrade degree temperature change. That's quite a bit. That would make that water boil. So probably, of course I just took those numbers out of the air, probably they will not put this much, um, this much calcium chloride in the package because that would make the water in the package boil. If you start at 25 degrees centigrade, it would be over 100 degrees centigrade. Now it could be that the boiling point of water is higher uh, with that calcium chloride dissolved in it, but I wouldn't want to take any chances. So probably what I would like to do is probably change this to maybe one eighth of a mole. So we'll change this to one eighth of a mole and then divide this of course by two. And then we have a temperature change of somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 49.5 degrees uh, centigrade degrees. 
And then if we add that to the 25 degrees centigrade, let's see what we get. So T final would then be equal to T initial plus the change in the temperature. So we start at 25 degrees centigrade. After that, 49.5 centigrade degrees. And that gives us 74.5 degrees centigrade, which of course would be very hot. And you probably would not want to touch those with your bare hands. Now, assuming that there is some insulation material around there, it could be that it doesn't get up to the temperature uh, quite that quickly, but I'm sure that the manufacturer will put the right amount of water in there and the right amount of calcium chloride to make sure that when you break that seal and the temperature goes up, it will not burn you to the point where you cannot even safely put into your gloves or into your shoes. But at least you get the idea. Very interesting invention. You take some chemical that when you dissolve it in water, it will then dissolve into its ions and it will then release through an exothermic reaction a fair amount of heat. When the water is in that package then absorbs that heat, it will get warmer and then radiate that into your gloves or your shoes and they'll probably put the right amount of water, right amount of chemical in there so that the temperature will not go up too high. And that's how that works.